Welcome to Around the Table. I love home and I love food and this is the place where they come together. Today we are making broccoli pesto pasta and my whole family, including my kids, gobbled it up and it was amazing because I was able to sneak lots of broccoli into this pasta dish. But I also think it would make a great date night, dinner date meal. So that's how I've set it up today. And a few tips when you are styling one pasta, but two, I'm just setting up for a date night look. Um, you know, I'm all about the styling. I love the food, but it's gotta be styled well too. So just pick up some beautiful neutral, uh, actually, whatever you want, just some beautiful flowers when you're at Trader Joe's. Um, we have some ranunculus here in a really beautiful vase. The thing about entertaining is it's all about collecting. So as long as you're collecting really pretty votive holders or vases kind of along the way, it makes entertaining so easy because you can go into that cabinet and then grab some of your favorites and pull a look together really easily. Always, always go for the cloth napkin. Don't break out the paper napkin or heaven forbid the paper towels. And then when I am styling a pasta dish or plating it, I should say, I think of everything in terms of styling, but plating it, I love something that has a rim. So a shallow, bowl or a plate that has a higher rim. It just works beautifully for the aesthetic, but also functionality as well. In this dish, we have some crispy pancetta. Rather than mixing it into the pasta where it gets hidden, we sprinkle it over the top and then you can mix it in to your liking. So let's move over to the kitchen and get cooking. So we've got a short and simple ingredient list, but this recipe is all about the flavors and the balance that they bring. So we've got fresh broccoli, pine nuts, manchego, olive oil, pancetta, parsley, and rigatoni. We use rigatoni because one, it's beautiful, but it also allows the pesto to stick to the pasta um, in a really nice way. That said, if you don't have rigatoni, another pasta would work great. I have a large pot of boiling water already on the stove and you want to generously salt your water. We're gonna put this in and now I'm gonna start on the pesto. We've got our broccoli. So I've used a whole head of broccoli here. So that's probably about two cups. And then I'm going to add my pine nuts. I have one bunch of parsley, which is about two cups, lots of parsley. I love that we're getting so much freshness in this pesto. So I'm gonna add the salt and then we'll start pulsing these ingredients and then we'll add the olive oil. We are not just going to grate this, we're going to use a microplane to grate this. So microplaning gives you a finer texture on the cheese and we'll wait to add it so that we can retain the texture of the pesto. Always, always, always grate more than you need so that you can sprinkle a little on the top. So I got my pesto and a mountain of fluffy, look at this, manchego cheese. And I am going to add this in and fold in the cheese. At this point, our pasta should almost be done. And then we're gonna mix it together in a pan until it's nice and glossy and delicious. And that's kind of it, you guys. It tastes like you know what you're doing, but it's so easy. Before I take the pasta off, I must note, do not dump out the pasta water because we are going to use it to bring all the flavors together. So drain your pasta, but save it and we will be adding it to the pan. So I'm saving about two cups of the pasta water. Um, you might not use this whole amount, but it's good to have extra just in case. I'm gonna crisp up my pancetta and I'll do that first. I'm going to use that same pan. I'll take the crispy pancetta out of the pan and then use all that delicious flavor to mix everything together. So a tip here is to add your pancetta while the pan is cold and then turn on the heat. That allows the fat to render more evenly. This is the size of the skillet that I'm using. It's probably about a 12 inch in diameter, 12 inches. I would say it's about 12 inches. 
After your pancetta is crispy, take it out of the pan and set it aside. We're going to use that to garnish the pasta at the end. It adds some nice color and great texture. And we're also going to use the fat from the pancetta and we're going to cook our pasta in that. But we don't need all of that fat, so we're going to remove a little bit with a paper towel. So I've got my broccoli pesto, my crispy pancetta, my cooked rigatoni, and my pasta water. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my pesto to the pan with one cup of pasta water. You can add a little bit more pasta water if needed to loosen up the sauce. You're looking for a consistency that's going to easily cover your rigatoni. The pasta water is a very key ingredient to this dish. It's starchy and it allows the pesto to cling to the pasta. Okay, so the temp is on medium low. I'll start by adding my broccoli pesto and one cup of the pasta water. We're just gonna loosen this up. So I have my broccoli pesto and the pasta water and it's nice and thinned out and it is ready for the pasta. Add my rigatoni. And I'd keep some extra pasta water on hand. If it starts to feel a little thick, then you can add just a little bit of water at a time until it gets to the consistency of your liking. I love pesto and I love it for a few different reasons. One, because I feel like every time you have a dish that incorporates pesto, it immediately feels a little bit elevated. But I also love it because it's really easy to make and do your own variations. So a few herbs, pine nuts, a little bit of lemon, olive oil, you're good to go, but you can trade out the pine nuts for cashews, the basil or the broccoli in this case for kale. I used spinach and did a spinach pesto and it turned out great. All the ingredients are really interchangeable when you're making a pesto. And I feel like when I'm at a restaurant and something incorpor incorporates pesto, I usually choose that dish. Okay, so everything's nice and mixed together and now it's time to plate it. All right, so I have a low, shallow plate with nice sides. A wide, shallow bowl would work as well. And then I'm gonna take a few scoops of the pasta. I mean, the more the better, right? And I try to kind of push it into the center instead of spreading it out flat. I'd rather see a mountain of pasta than just like a flat thing of pasta. I am going to add the crispy pancetta. So I'm gonna sprinkle that over the top. I like my pancetta to stay crispy and so adding it last allows it to not get all soft when, when you're mixing up the pasta. And then last, I'm gonna add a little bit of this manchego cheese on the top. If you want to go the extra mile, I'd say tear off a little sprig of the parsley and put that on the top and then you're feeling extra fancy. It's simple, it's vibrant. It was so easy to make, but it looks beautiful on the plate. And the most important part, it's delicious as well. And join us next time. We'll be making a delicious dessert. <laughs>